Today I'm going to show you how to create a glitch title animation in DaVinci Resolve. Kind of like this one. All right, before we get into this, before we start building out this effect, there's a couple things I need to tell you. First, this is probably the most complicated effect, the comp most complicated tutorial that I have ever done on this channel. So just be prepared. I don't want you to get mad at me and feel like I caught you off guard. Fair warning, this is, this is not quick and easy. This is... This takes work. Second, there are quicker and faster and even easier ways to get a glitch effect in your videos. The reason why I'm showing you this particular method is because one, it gives you a much higher level of customization. You're really going to be able to dial it in and get the look you want. And two, because by doing it this way, you're going to get a better grasp of fusion and hopefully unlock some of that creativity. and help you maybe start building out your own effects, your own titles, your own transitions. So in the long run, I think this way is gonna help you a lot more. And with that being said, we've got a lot of ground to cover. So let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and start working on this title animation. All right, let's get started. We are in the edit page in DaVinci Resolve. I've already got a timeline set up and ready to go. So the first thing that I wanna do is create a new fusion clip. Let's go over to the media pool, right click, new fusion composition, and we'll call this glitch title. If I can type correctly, that would be nice. Go ahead and hit create. Bring that fusion composition into the timeline. Make sure it's selected and head over to the fusion page. And just to make sure things stay organized, let's go ahead and right click in the node section. We're gonna go to arrange tools to grid. Now everything will snap to the grid and it'll be nice and clean just the way I like it. And one optional thing that you can do, this is something that I do whenever I do this, just in case I want it later, is I'm gonna create a background. So let's go over here and we're gonna click background. And by default, backgrounds come as a solid color, usually black, and what I actually want is transparency. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that that background node is selected, come over into my inspector, go to the opacity slider and drag that all the way up. And then what I wanna do is connect this background node to the media out node so what i want to do is create a merge node and then i'm going to connect the merge node to media out and the reason why i'm connecting it to a merge node will become clear pretty soon actually in just a second next thing i want to do is create a text node so make sure that none of the nodes are selected hit the text button that'll add a text node with the text node selected, we're going to add a transform node. And then we're gonna connect the transform node to the merge node. So, so far, if you're following the order of operations, we've got a text, we've got a transform node, we've got a background node, all of those are coming into the merge and then it's merging to go to media out. The next step is to actually create our title. So let's make sure that text node is selected and we're gonna come over to our inspector. We're gonna type something in. We'll call this glitch title. We're gonna change the font to whatever you want. I'm gonna do something nice and modern. It's good. We're gonna change it from bold to regular. We're gonna increase the size a little bit and we're gonna increase the tracking. That looks good. And the next thing we want to do is start masking out different parts of this title. So we're going to make sure that text node is selected and we're going to click the mask button. And you'll see that when we add the mask, it actually blocked out the outer edges of this title. And we don't necessarily want it like that. So we're going to bring down the width a little bit, bring down the height a little bit. And we're actually just going to go from left to right. So let's go ahead and drag this mask over that looks good right about there make sure that that mask is selected we're going to go ahead and add another mask bring down the width bring down the height drag that over add another mask size it up drag it over add another mask you guys starting to get the idea here right i got a pole up in the left hand side of the screen make sure that you answer me so you know, or so that I know that you're following along. Add another mask. And the thing about this, as you're doing this, basically the more masks you have, the more bits that you block off at a time, 
the more customized you're going to be able to make this glitch and the, the better it's going to look. And that's what I really like about this method of making a glitch transition is because I can really make it look exactly how I want it instead of doing something super simple and super quick. This really, really gives me the look that I want. Size it up. We're almost, almost there. One more mask should do it. Bring that width down, bring that height down, and we're good to go. One other thing that I wanna do before we really get to glitching this thing out is come to my transform node. And what I'm gonna do is I wanna actually make this kind of zoom in a little bit. Starting from the beginning, we're gonna go ahead and go to size and we're going to hit a keyframe. Let's go all the way to frame 119. I'm just gonna increase the size a little bit and that'll add another keyframe at the end. And I don't want this to actually start zooming right at the beginning because that's gonna mess with my glitch. So let's go ahead and we'll go to frame, let's say frame number 10. That looks, that looks like it'll be about right. So let's go ahead, bring this down to one. And that'll automatically set another keyframe. And that should be good to go. All right, let's go back to the beginning. And now it's time to start glitching this thing out a little bit. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set these masks to turn on and off at sort of random times. We're going to control the times. And what I like to do is actually start right in the middle. Let's go ahead and click rectangle five. And we're going to go over to our inspector. We're going to bring the level down to zero. And in fact, let's do that with all of our rectangles. We're just going to bring them all down to zero because this is going to be starting off everything turned off all right let's go back to rectangle five and let's start turning this on and off let's go back to frame zero we're going to go ahead and create a keyframe right there we're going to move over one frame we're going to bring level all the way up to one going to move over two frames set a keyframe move over one frame go down to zero or one frame make that three frames set a keyframe move over one frame, go up, move over one frame, go down, move over two frames, set a keyframe, up, move over one frame, go down, move over one frame, go back up. And now if we come back to the beginning and we play that through, you'll see that that mask is kind of blinking on and off. Next thing that I want to do is open up my spline. So we're going to go up to the top right, click spline, click on rectangle five, I'm going to hit zoom to fit. We're going to highlight all of our keyframes. We're going to hit S for smooth, and then we're going to highlight all of our keyframes again. We're going to hit control C to copy all of those keyframes. All right, let's move on to rectangle nine. Cause like I said, we're staggering this. So it actually looks more like a glitch. Let's move over to keyframe number one. We'll set a keyframe. Let's come over back into our splines and we're actually gonna deactivate rectangle five by clicking on the checkbox twice. We're gonna come down to the keyframe that we set for rectangle nine. We're gonna right click and we're gonna click on paste points slash value. Let's move over one frame. We're gonna deactivate rectangle nine. We're gonna come up to rectangle one. We're gonna set a keyframe, come into our spline, right click, paste points value. Move over one frame again, go to rectangle eight, set a keyframe, deactivate rectangle one. Right click on our created keyframe, points value, move over one keyframe, deactivate rectangle eight, go to rectangle two, set a keyframe, go into our splines. You starting to get the idea. Basically what we're doing, we're using the same pattern for each one of our masks, but we're staggering them so they start and stop at different times. And what I'm doing, because I set my masks from left to right, what I can do now 
is if I just, you know, go from nine to one to eight to two and all that stuff, I can make it so everything just looks very random and very glitchy. Go ahead, right click that keyframe, paste points value. And this is gonna make a lot more sense in a second, I promise. Like I told you before, this is probably the most complicated tutorial I've ever done. Move over a keyframe, deactivate rectangle seven. Let's go to three, set a keyframe, right click, paste points value, move over a keyframe, deactivate rectangle three, go to six, set a keyframe, right click, paste points value, move over a keyframe, activate rectangle six, go to rectangle four, at a keyframe, right click, points value. And now, if we went into our spline, let's open this up so you can see better, and we activated all of our rectangles, and we look at our splines, you'll see it looks very random, very squiggly, and like it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And that's exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and bring our splines back. Let's bring our cursor back to the beginning. And if we play through this, you'll see that it's very glitchy. It's coming on at different times. And that already looks pretty good, but there's some more stuff that we can do with it to make it look even better. So let's move on. We are actually done with our rectangles. So just to keep everything nice and organized, let's go ahead and select all of our rectangles. Go ahead and right click. I'm gonna hit group. And then just so I don't lose track of everything, I'm gonna right click group. Go to rename and we're gonna call this masks go ahead and hit okay and then we can take our group drag it down everything over and now it's nice and manageable again all right next thing i'm going to do is add a prism blur so what i want to do is click on my transform node and what i'm going to do is hit shift space I'll type in prism there's prism blur, make sure that's selected. Hit add, gonna select my prism blur and I'm just gonna play around with this until it looks good. I'm gonna bring down the blur just a bit, change my aberration distance a little bit. The aberration strength, that looks good right there. Yeah, that's looking pretty good, but we actually wanna make sure that this prism blur turns off. So let's go ahead and we're gonna find our last keyframe that we created with our masks, which I believe was rectangle four. Go ahead and hit zoom to fit. I'm gonna right click on our masks, expand group, Let's click on rectangle four, come over to the last keyframe of that. We're gonna move back two frames, click on our prism blur. We're gonna come down to global blend. In our inspector, we're gonna set a keyframe move over two frames and bring that blend all the way to one. And that'll get rid of all of our prism blur. So now if we play this back, it'll be a little bit choppy, but you'll see at the end, the prism blur goes away. And now we've got our nice little expanding title. Go ahead and close out our masks. Next thing I wanna do is add a duplicate node. So I'm gonna make sure that prism blur node is selected. I'm gonna hit shift space again. I'm gonna type in duplicate. I'm gonna make sure the duplicate effect is selected and I'm going to click add. Make sure that duplicate node is selected. We're gonna come over to our inspector. I'm gonna change the number of copies to three. I'm gonna adjust the time offset a little bit. Increase the size. Play around with our alignment just a tad. I'm gonna play around with our time offset just a bit because we want these things to be showing up at different times. We're gonna come down to gain. We're gonna change that blend mode until things are a little bit more blurry. All right, let's click on prism blur so we can find our keyframes. And go to our second to last keyframe. Go back to our duplicate. 
And we're going to go up to copies, set a keyframe, move over two keyframes and change the value to one. So now if we play that back, you'll see that our glitch kind of goes all over the place, which is exactly what we're going for. The last thing that I want to do is kind of smooth out my keyframes for the prism blur and for the duplicates. So I'm going to go ahead and deactivate rectangle four. I'm going to come to prism blur. We got prism blur and duplicates, which are both activated. Let's go ahead and hit zoom to fit. Work on the prism blur first. Hit zoom to fit again. Go highlight both of our keyframes. Hit S for smooth. Hit that. Activate duplicates. Zoom to fit both of our keyframes. Hit S for zoom. And once that's done, we throw a quick glitch sound effect, maybe put it on a nice gray background, and we've got a title that looks like this. Now, like I said before, this method of doing the glitch title animation is going to give you an extra level of customization. I mean, you can customize every single part of this effect so you can really dial it in and get the look you want. Also, it's not only good for title animations, you can use this same method to glitch out your videos, create transitions, and basically whatever you want. Now, if you watch this and your brain just kind of exploded and you're totally lost, then I would suggest going back and checking out some Fusion Basics by watching this video right here. And if you found this useful and you wanna learn more about video editing, camera gear, and how to make better videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you in the next video. Go watch it now.